What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In my last video, I shared with you some advice from a bass fishing legend, Rick Clun, and you seem to really like it, and so I want to share some more advice I heard from Rick about how to find bass in different sections of a lake. And this is a framework that I actually use in a lot of my virtual fishing lessons and on the water fishing lessons, and it helps me find bass on any lake, any time of the year, in any part of the country. So let's get into it. So I don't have a video of Rick Clun's advice like I did in my last video, but to paraphrase, Rick basically said that a lake can be broken up into four sections, and that the majority of the bass in the lake are going to be in one of these four sections, depending on the seasonal patterns, the weather, water clarity, all kinds of stuff. And this is actually a framework that I have adopted and really refined over the years to help me narrow down which sections of a creek or a bay or a river system I need to be focusing on and that have the biggest concentration of bass. And so in this video, I want to break that down for you, show you how I can actually apply this framework on the lake, any lake, and hopefully help you find bass a lot quicker next time you get on the lake. So first up, I want to share with you guys a framework that I created for my offshore fishing playbook you may have heard me talk about. And these are the 10 forces of offshore fishing. And I break up these 10 forces into two groups, the where and the when. The where are five factors I pay attention to when I'm trying to determine where I need to be casting my fishing lure. And then the when are five factors that Mother Nature gives us that we can't choose or decide they're given to us and we have to adapt to them on the water and what i found after years of bass fishing watching instructional videos going to seminars is that most bass fishermen and fishing pros focus on these middle six factors and a lot of guys when they go to the lake they go with the preconceived notion that they want to fish a certain type of cover or a type of structure or a certain water depth and they may pay attention to the amount of wind the amount of sun the whether it's pre front post front things like that and those are the factors they focus on and they use those to dictate where and when they're going to fish but I've actually had the opportunity to fish with a lot of Bassmaster Elite Series and FLW Tour Pros, as well as practice with some FLW Tour Pros for the Forcewood Cup. And whenever I'm out with these Tour Pros, I notice that they focus on the other four factors in the 10 forces way more than the other six that most anglers focus on. And I believe this is why the best anglers in the world can find fish faster and more consistently than other bass fishermen. And the two factors that really stand out to me are the section of the lake and the area of the lake. And these are the two factors I focus on the most when I go to the lake and when I'm trying to find bass. And they relate really well to Rick Clun's advice that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So what do I mean by section of the lake and area of the lake? Well, if we pull up a lake map here, the first thing I do when I look at a lake map is break up the lake into one to two mile sections. And I find that bass are going to set up differently in different water depths, different types of cover, even feed on different types of forage in each section of a lake. And this is dependent on water clarity, the water temperature, the amount of current in each section of the lake, all kinds of things. And I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I will talk about that in another video. And then you can actually go into any single section of the lake and break that section up into different areas of that section. And so you may have a creek, for example, in one section of the lake, and you might find that you have the main lake portion, the first third of the creek, the middle of the creek, and the back of the creek. And I usually can break up one section of a lake into four different areas. And this is what Rick Clun was talking about when he was mentioning that you can break up a lake into four distinct sections or four distinct areas. And you can do this not only on a lake with creeks, you can also do this on a big natural lake where you have big flats. A lot of times I break it up where you have the deep water, you have the edge of a flat, the middle of a flat, and then the bank. That's four sections. You can also do this on a river system where you have the main river, the first third of a backwater, the middle of a backwater, and then the back of a backwater. And there's a lot of our different types of fisheries you can break up this way. But really the big thing is that I'm breaking up 
a section of a lake into four distinct areas where these fish are going to be. So why is this important? Well, in general, what I find is that bass aren't always evenly distributed from the main lake all the way to the back of a creek. A lot of times, some of the bass will migrate from the main lake back in the back of the creeks and then back out to the main lake, depending on the seasonal patterns, water temperature, current, forage, water quality, all kinds of factors. And if I was to give kind of percentages to this, these are not like scientifically proven percentages, these are just kind of based on my experience, I would say that 40% of the bass in a creek arm are going to stay in the same section of that creek for most of the year. So 10% might stay in the back of the creek year round, 10% will stay in the first third of the creek year round, 10% will stay on the main lake year round, so on and so forth. And then about 60% of the bass in this creek will move to different sections depending on all the factors I mentioned earlier. So if we step back a little bit, why would bass actually want to move from one part of a creek to the other? Why not just stay in the same place year round, just live by the same dock or whatever? Well, there's two main drivers of bass movement. The first is the spawning cycle and the second is bait fish migration. So let's start with the spawning cycle. And as most of you guys know, bass will spawn in the spring up in shallow water, shallow pockets, stuff like that. And so what happens is that a lot of the bass will be sitting on the main lake in the wintertime, or close to deep water at least, because it's going to be cold and they want to stay away from the cool air temperatures. But then as they want to spawn, they're actually going to move into the creeks find some shallow protected pockets that are protected from the wind, they maybe warm up a little bit quicker, and they are going to transition from the main lake to maybe the first third of the creek, the middle of the creek, or even the back of the creeks. And so that's the first driver of bass movement from one area of a creek to another area. And then the other thing that's going to dictate bass movement is the change in bait fish location. And so what you might find is that after bass spawn, they might pull out of the pockets where they spawned back out towards the first third of the creek or the main lake because the bait fish like shad, blue heron, things like that will actually start spawning in May right after the bass spawn. And so the bass just use up all their energy to spawn during the spring. They want to get back out to the main lake and feed up and recuperate from the intense spawn they had. And so usually the bass are going to change from the back of the creeks, the middle of the creeks, to the main lake because that's where the bait fish are, that's where they can feed. And also a lot of times in the summer when you have really hot temperatures, the bait fish are going to be out in deeper water out towards the main lake where the lake is a little bit cooler. And then as the thermocline starts to disappear in the fall, water temperatures start to drop, a lot of the shad will push back into the creeks and then bass will follow them from the main lake back in the creeks as well, going from the main lake, first third of the creek, middle of the creek, and back of the creek. And then usually the shad will move back out of the creeks in the winter and they'll move back towards the first third of the creek in the main lake and the bass will follow them back out. And so usually bass are migrating again for two reasons, either to move to shallow water to spawn or to follow the bait fish. And so what this means is that a certain percentage of the bass in a lake are going to be moving from the main lake back into the creeks during the springtime. And then after they spawn and you transition from spring to summer, bass are going to move out of the creeks back to the main lake. And then as you transition from summer into winter and water temperatures drop, the bass will move back into the creeks. And then as water temperatures get really cold and the shad move out of the creeks, the bass will pull back out. And so you're going to have this movement in and out for some percentage of the bass in this creek. And you can apply all of these concepts to the other types of fisheries I mentioned, natural lakes, river system, things like that. Sometimes the forage will be different. Maybe it won't be shad, it'll be perch, or maybe another type of forage entirely. But the same concept can be applied to all types of fisheries. There's just little nuances and small changes that you'll pick up as you start to fish these different types of waters. And I want to be clear that not all bass are going to move from the main lake back in the creeks and then back out to the main lake and change area of this creek. A lot of times bass may stay in, let's say, the middle third of a creek all year round. 
And the reason for that is because there's usually some form of forage that stays in the creeks year-round. For example, on lakes with creeks and with a little bit clearer water, a lot of times the bluegill will spawn in these creeks around shallow docks, bushes, things like that, all summer long. And so some percentage of the bass will spawn, then they'll stay in the creeks and stay in the pockets to feed on the bluegill. And they actually don't need to go back to the main lake and feed on the shad because they can feed on the bluegill. And so a lot of these fish may stay in one section of the creek year round, but I would, again, I would say if I would estimate it, 40% of the bass are gonna stay put, and then about 60% of the bass are going to move in and out. And so if I was going to choose which fish I want to fish for, usually I choose the fish that are moving in and out because let's say you have 10% of the bass in each section or each area of this creek, and then you find the area of that creek where the other 60% of the bass are, they're migrating, that means that 70% of the bass are going to be in this section of the creek. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather be fishing where 70% of the bass are rather than where 10% of the bass are. And if you can identify which area of the creek these fish are in, you're definitely going to be a more successful fisherman, catch a lot more numbers, and a lot of times you have a lot more fun fishing. Now, it can be difficult to identify which area of a creek has the biggest population of fish. And I'll get into this more in other videos because we're already kind of going pretty long on this one. But I wanted to kind of get this concept out there for you guys first and let you guys try to figure out what to do with this information and then I'll be talking about this in a lot of my on the water fishing videos when I go out to Grand Lake, Beaver Lake, also during my three hour challenge videos and then I'll also be making follow up videos on this one about identifying good sections of the lake as well as how to identify which areas of these creeks are the most productive and so definitely check back to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel for more information. Hit the subscribe button down below as well as click the bell notifications down there so that you'll be alerted of all my new videos and so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you change your perspective a little bit using the advice from a legend of the sport Rick Klon. So thanks again for checking out the video guys and I'll see you all in the next one.